Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is what our own galaxy, the Milky Way, probably looks like from the outside. Today we're going to be talking about a discovery coming from the other famous galaxy called the Andromeda. And specifically we're going to be talking about how we were totally wrong about its mass. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. the Milky Way is right in front of you and the Andromeda is this little blob right there. It's actually at a distance of about two and a half million light years away from us and it's headed toward us. As a matter of fact, we're now almost certain it's going to collide with our own galaxy sometime maybe in the next four or so billion years. The actual collision uh, that I'm going to recreate here using Universe Sandbox will most likely combine our two galaxies into one mega galaxy that some scientists call Milkdromeda, some scientists call Milkmeda, some scientists call Andrew Milky Way, and some scientists come up with some other cheesy names. But um, I personally like the name Milkdromeda the best. Now, uh, when this happens, it's very likely that, first of all, uh, nothing will happen to our own solar system. As a matter of fact, the actual stars will not collide, they're just too far apart. Uh, from each other and I even did the actual mathematical calculations for this something like three years ago in, in one of the first videos on the channel. Um, and the probability of collision here is very 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 low. But um, the actual galaxy that is created then will be very very massive. Now for the longest time now we thought it's going to be mega massive because we actually thought that uh, the Andromeda galaxy was about three times as massive as the Milky Way. But a very, very recent study from January of 2019 um, kind of discredits that, saying that we were most likely incorrect. It's very, very likely that both the Andromeda galaxy that you see right here and the Milky Way have a relatively similar mass, uh, which is about 800 billion masses of the Sun. Now, that's still quite a lot of mass, but it's basically three times less than we thought there was. And um, I'm going to explain to you how they actually did this. And it's not, a, it's not a very difficult sort of study. It's not a very difficult way of trying to calculate the mass of a galaxy. But it is an ingenious way because we didn't really um, think about doing this earlier. And so what these scientists did was use various planetary nebula. And here's what a typical planetary nebula looks like. And um, these are essentially the um, end years, the final years of a star similar to our sun after it becomes a red giant and expands all of its mass and then basically kind of blows it all away. So planetary nebula are not really, uh, well, nothing to do with planets, they're not really planetary. They, they are star nebula, but they're not uh, created by supernova. They're created by very large stars, like for example, Betelgeuse, um, that will eventually end up in these beautiful formations. And uh, so having found over 2,500 of these, actually almost 3,000 of these in the last few years, uh, we were able to calculate, uh, well, various speeds of stars uh, using very precise observations of these uh, nebulae because they're actually very easy to see. So um, what these scientists did was uh, calculate the speeds of these nebula and put them on a graph and try to plot uh, the average speed and the essentially escape velocity. And what they've discovered is that none of these stars had a velocity higher than uh, the Milky Way. None of the velocities were higher than 470 kilometers per second. In other words, the escape velocity of the Andromeda galaxy is practically uh, the same as the escape velocity of the Milky Way. All of the stars in the Milky Way move on average uh, at about the same speed as the stars in the Andromeda. And that suggested to the scientists that the mass must be the same. And if the mass is the same, it means that we're literally kind of like twin galaxies. Um, Andromeda and the Milky Way are very, very similar. And once they are combined into uh, a mega galaxy, they'll probably distribute quite equally um, and create a somewhat beautiful, but probably somewhat strange shaped uh, Milkdromeda galaxy. But that's of course in the future and is not really that important right now. What is important though is the incredible new technique that was discovered uh, that we can now use to study other galaxies as well. So this particular technique is actually only um, possible now today uh, because we were able to observe so many different planetary nebula in the Andromeda. 
back in the days specifically i guess even a decade ago this would not be possible because we just didn't have enough data we didn't have enough observations uh, and that is why our mass uh, estimates for the andromeda were kind of off they were not really correct but because this study allowed us to actually uh, understand our nearby galaxy our neighbor galaxy so well we can now use very similar techniques to try to calculate masses of other nearby galaxies and possibly even uh, solve some other mistakes we've made in the last few years. I'm sure in the next few years uh, the scientists will use similar techniques to recalculate masses for other galaxies and um, possibly even discover something more incredible in the meanwhile. And before I finish this video, let me give you a few more interesting tidbits about uh, the Milky Way and in some sense about Andromeda as well. So if we were to actually look at where our own sun is located, and I'm just going to point at Earth, uh, there it is. At this distance from the center of the Milky Way, uh, the escape velocity is approximately 537 kilometers per second. And uh, well, in case of Andromeda, it will be quite similar at this distance. And what's interesting is that our planet, or not, our, not just our planet, our solar system is moving at a speed of about 220 kilometers per second. So um, if we were to move about three times as fast as we're moving now, we would actually escape the galaxy. We would be on the escape uh, route out of the galaxy and would most likely become a rogue solar system, which means that we would have to gain about 317 kilometers per second of velocity. That's kind of a lot, actually. Uh, when you think about it, the escape velocity of our planet Earth is only 11 kilometers per second, and even the fastest object we've ever created uh, was moving anywhere as fast as this. As a matter of fact, if you were to try to calculate the velocity of Voyager spacecraft that's already kind of far away from the Sun and technically is in the interstellar space now, its velocity is about 17 kilometers per second. So it's still basically about 300 kilometers per second behind the escape velocity. However, we have discovered quite a lot of rogue stars uh, essentially flying through intergalactic space without an actual galaxy to be attached to. And um, they do have quite a large speed. And to get that speed, they normally have to experience some kind of a dramatic event, either to pass very, very close to a supermassive black hole so like, for example, right here, if they would fly really close to a supermassive black hole, they would suddenly get a boost of speed that might take them outside of the galaxy. Or um, more often, they actually get this velocity from something along the sides of this. A very large supernova occurring uh, very, very close to the actual star that then sends it on its merry way by giving it a tremendous boost of velocity. So when this happens, uh, usually, or in most cases, a star can get a huge, huge boost and fly really fast uh, and essentially escape the galaxy. But obviously, because the supernova occurred so close to the star, it's very likely that the actual planetary system would be destroyed. But anyway, so on that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to tell you about how we were actually wrong about the mass of the Andromeda galaxy and how now we have a technique to calculate galactic uh, masses much more accurately and with a lot more precision. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to know more about space, the universe and science, of course. And come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And maybe even consider supporting the show on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. YouTube has become my primary career and it's basically how I now make money. Not sure if this was a good choice, but I'm going to see how it goes. Thank you so much for all of the support from all of the Patreon supporters so far. I really appreciate all of your help. Thank you guys. Space out. <laughs>